Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard Everett on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. Uh, and today we're working on our Shmup Grades game. Um, so I did a little bit of something between last stream and today's stream. Um, but I guess I should say where we left off last time. So we we left off adding enemies to the game. So we we added some enemies that trigger when you walk by. So that's something. Um, we're going to be doing some other enemy trigger conditions. Like we want to have like battles and like a room when you get there and stuff like that. But I wanted to have more enemy movement options. So, you know, right now we just kind of have these guys just fly across the screen, which is pretty boring and you can just run right past them. Um, and so I made a little extension um, called pads. Nice of you to join us, Sarah. If I wasn't one minute late to a meeting, then would I even be at the meeting? Mm. <laughs> um, so we've talked a lot about movement animations and how they're really SVG paths um, on this stream before. And so we're going to use that for controlling our um, enemies. Uh, but I made a little extension to make it easier for us so we don't just have to write down arcane strings. So we have a little path builder. So basically, you have a path. You can add steps to it with like an X and a Y and say if it's relative or not. And um, uh, the X and Y can be anything. So I can put a sprite in there. So just grab you know, temp enemy, stick that in there. Well, not in the X, the whole thing. Um, so it'll align to wherever this temp enemy is, or it could be a tile map location, what have you. Um, and then at the bottom, we have an animate with my path to string. We can also just use the regular old animation. Um, the way that this is different is that this one um, actually tries to move at a constant speed. So I actually interpolate the curve and try and calculate the distance and get you moving at a constant speed along the path. Whereas if you use the regular movement animation, it basically chops up every step you have and gives an equal amount of time to each, which means that if you have one step where you're moving one pixel and then one step where you're moving 100 pixels, um, the one pixel one will go incredibly slowly and the 100 pixel one will go very fast. Um, yeah, so um, we're going to be using this today to make some, some enemies. And um, we were brainstorming uh, enemies that eat cacti, cactuses. Um, and uh, Joey gave me a, a very helpful article from Wildlife and Foreigner, Animals That Eat Cactus. So we're going to be adding some of these animals into the game. Um, I'm not going to be animating them. We just don't have time to do that. I was doing this past stuff instead. But we already have the black-tailed jackrabbit. Uh -huh. Did uh, I need to pull up the list again, or did you have it right, handy? Uh, I have it in the chat. You should, you should pull it up, yeah. Okay. Um, and we're going to be giving them different kind of um, uh, like patterns to move around the screen. So um, with Jackrabbit, we have someone who's moving around a lot, right? So um, OK, Thomas is dropping an Avatar The Last Airbender reference into the. You know, of course, I'd be, I'm surprised chat. it hasn't been made already. No. OK. Um, It'll quench you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we want to have a few different enemy types. The ones I've been thinking of so far are we just have some standard enemies that just kind of run around and fire. Um, hello, invalid project is what I'm going to call you because I don't know how to pronounce it with a Y. Um, and uh, uh, they're just going to kind of run around and fire at us. Um, I think it also makes sense for I want to have an enemy that is actually like a chain of enemies. So you'll have a chain of enemies that's going to like zigzag around the screen, basically. That's the idea. Hi, Lucas. Um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, so does anything in that list, Joey, make itself a minimal to being a chain of enemies that run around? Like, is there anything that would walk in a line in that list? Um, ah, oh, geez, it's, it's got one of those pop ups that wants me to subscribe. There he goes away. Um, Prairie dogs? Do they? Sure, they're social animals. They're like social, and a guy. I, every time I remember seeing them in like a show, there's like a million of them that pop up, and then they're like, "Wow!" Like, oh, 
that wasn't an empty desert. That was just a bunch of prairie dogs laying down in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, are there any other ones, though? Because we could also do something else with prairie dogs, which is they burrow, right? That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, so it might be fun to have just one, like, pop up, see, go down. Pop up somewhere else, so go down. There's collared peccaries, which are the little cute furry pigs. Uh, desert wood rats, rats in general. Maybe we could... We could do something dumb and weird with camels, where it's like each of their humps is a separate enemy. <laughs> it's gonna maybe make a camel boss or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, um, okay. The like, it's like kind of their own. they have cannons. <laughs> each of the humps is like a cannon that shoots something different. Cannon animal. <laughs> All right. Invalid project has a question. If I may, what is a shmup? Yeah, you're you're forgiven for forgiven for not knowing what a shmup is. Shmup stands for shoot 'em up, which is a very graphic sounding name for a very innocuous genre of video games. Um, shmups are like Galaga or even Space Invaders, kind of, where you're just kind of like a thing that is firing a bunch of bullets at waves of enemies. That's what it is. So all those kinds of arcade style games where you're just like walking around or, or going in and like a constant motion and firing at a bunch of things. Those are all shmups. And you can see our shmup. Um, we have this little cactus dude in this desert, and they can fire lots of stuff. I have it. I have the firing turned way up right now, but you can see we're we're firing a ton of stuff, and we can destroy these birds. Get out of here. Um. So okay, all right. I, I think we can do that rat for the line one. Um, do they just look like rats? Is there anything distinctive about how they look, Joey? Um, they kind of. What was the name? What was the name of them? Desert Wood Rat. They kind of, I mean, they do just kind of look like rats, but more like a little... Uh, yeah, big ears and big tail. Like bigger ears, big tail. Yeah, yeah. They just have bigger ears. So it's just like yeah. a rat with bigger ears. That's what yeah, it's pretty cute. And it's pretty cute, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And then I was going to look up uh, Prairie Dogs. Uh, Inval Project says, what about um, a desert sandstorm boss? That's a great idea. Um, all right, prairie dogs. Um, there's nothing cute about this. Um, okay, so uh, let's um, start by... Uh, real quick, uh, I do want you to look up collared peccary, too. Okay. Collared, like, you know, they have collars on. Yeah, and gotcha. peccary is P-E-C-C-A-R-Y, yeah. Uh uh-huh. Wait, how big are they? Oh, the pig, the the baby picture I saw was much cuter. But I mean, they're pretty cute too. But oh, <laughs> the babies! Oh, <laughs> pretty cute. All right. The adult ones give like Boomba from the Lion King live action vibes. Yeah. Okay. Let's spawn some enemies. So I want to make some enemies that spawn when the as soon as the tile comes on screen. We haven't done that yet. So we're going to go into our on tile map loaded and let's do these rat guys. So um, right now our ones that spawn are based off of when the player passes by. So you can see this guys. We scan to the left and when it is there we fire. We want to do some ones that are just looking at where the camera is and once the tile is on screen we'll just spawn the enemy to come down and attack or what have you. Um, so we're going to go into our tile map, which I think is inside of on start. Here we go. Very exciting. Um, and these are our enemies of that kind. E and then GR stands for grunt, but I'm going to go ahead and change that to bird. Out of here. Bird. There we go. Okay, um, so uh, let's go ahead and do a new one. We're going to do um, something when it spawns on the camera. So I'm going to put in a little camera icon. Like that, and then put a little line right here. And then um, this is going to be our rats. I think so. Uh, let's just go ahead and write in rat. Eh, there we go. 
Democrat. Um, all right, go away, birds. Gonna go ahead and put in our rats now so that we can test them out. And I'm just gonna sprinkle in a few of these like this for our testing. Well, okay, wait, the player spawns, I'm gonna move the player spawn down here. And there we go. All right. Would Zombies of God be considered a schmuck? Good question. I think that's a form game, right? Yeah, it's a form game. Yeah, yeah. it's a good one. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's a schmuck or not. Mm. Hey, one thing we should also do is right now we are centering our camera on our player. We need some more headroom, so we should move the camera ahead of where our player is. Um, so I noticed, like we're transition. almost past these enemies as soon as they spawn. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess we already are going in row, column, et cetera. So that's actually easier than I was thinking. I was trying to think of how you would transition. Yeah, after that. <laughs> it's easy. Um, so we're going to go to our camera stuff. Move camera? No. Is this inside of an on-game update? Yeah, here it is. OK, this is what I want. So our camera stuff we have, we move along one axis, and we're moving in between the camera locations. Um, and here, what we're doing is we are just uh, basically boxing in our Y and our X, depending on whatever our um, uh, location is and what axis we're on. So um, what we're going to do here is uh, if the camera current camera location row is greater than our next camera location row, that would mean that it is below and we're moving upwards. We want to instead center um, so that we are near the bottom of the screen. So like down here-ish. Um, so to make that happen, we're going to change this Y minus 60 and change it to be Y. Um, Let's see. So if we do this right now, by the way, is setting the um, uh, the camera top, which is why we're subtracting the 60. So I want the camera top to be more than 60 above where we are. So I want to subtract a bigger number from this. So I want to make this like minus 80. I don't know. Let's see how this works. OK. Yeah, a little, little farther. Yeah, that, that feels a bit more reasonable. Um, so we'll just keep dealing with that. So um, here, uh, when we're moving downwards, we want to do the opposite. So we're going to actually uh, subtract 30 instead of subtracting 90. Um, and we're going to keep this 30 pixel border thing happening. So um, for the X, if we're moving, so this is if the column is greater than the next camera location column, which means we're moving to the left. In that case, I want it to be the X. Wait, 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 wait. OK, wait, moving. We're moving to the left. So I want the distance between the camera thing and this to be greater. So I want it to subtract a bigger number. Right, so I want to make this minus 130. And I want to make this one minus 30. All right, we'll see if I did that right. So we're, we're just going to walk through our level real quick and make sure that that is looking right. Yeah, it looks like we're doing it right. Is the Thomas is looking quizzically at the fact that the camera speed <laughs> changes after the first location. Yes, Joey and I were also surprised at this. We started debugging <laughs> it and then decided we didn't care enough to fix the bug. So um, for the first leg, the camera is indeed faster than all the other legs. Don't worry about it. Yeah, someday that we'll just like spend two minutes off stream looking at it and be like, oh, duh. Okay. We, we already spent some time looking at it. All right. Yeah, but it was on stream. It, you get like your brain cuts off on stream sometimes. Mm-hmm. OK, let's see. Um, hi, Soren Lawrenson. Um, we also have uh, Mimic VR GT, who has dropped a link in chat. Um, hello. Have we seen them before? I, I don't see first time chat, so I'm not sure. OK. 
All right. Um, next up, let's go ahead and uh, code uh, those enemies. So um, what we're going to do here is we want to detect when this uh, tile enters into frame. So we're going to cover these tiles up eventually, but for now we'll just leave them so we can see what we're doing. Um, so uh, the, the e easiest way to do this is just to loop over all of these locations inside of an on-game update and see if it's on screen or not. Very possible. Um, that might get slow if you're making giant levels. I don't think it's going to be a problem for our game. Um, but, uh, you know, just something to keep in mind. So we're going to go into on-game updates. Um, we already actually have a do tile triggers thing that's getting called inside of our on-game update. There we go. And this is scanning for those bird ones that we have. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, make another one now um, down here, which is going to loop over all of those tile locations that we have. So do for element value of list, go into scene. We're going to do array of all locations. Going to make this rat. Um, and we need to detect if we are on screen. So inside of scene, um, we can grab this camera property block, and this has the left, right, top, bottom. And so with that, it's pretty easy for us to check to see if we're on screen. So we're going to use the center of the tile. Um, well, I don't know. I guess we could use the bottom of the tile. Well, no, because then we're going to have to detect what axis it is. But that's a pain. We're not going to do that. So we'll we'll use the center of the tile. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do an overlaps check. So if you haven't seen us do an overlaps check before, the easiest thing to do is actually check to see if you don't overlap. And then just knot it. So um, we need to get to the X of this location. So inside of scene, we have a, um, a location property block, um, which I'm going to grab here. And this has an X, Y. I got that. So if location, well, I guess, you know what? Actually, it's easy to do an edge check. We'll, we'll do edges because we can, uh, it's pretty much the same code. Actually, I realize now I was just being done before. All right. So if our left is less than um, our, or it's actually, we want to do if our left is greater than our camera right, then we can't possibly be overlapping, right? Because our left is greater than the right. Um. We can also do over here if our camera right, I'm sorry, if our location right is less than our camera left, same thing, we can't possibly be overlapping because, you know, it, it's not lining up. Um, so go ahead and put in or, and I'm going to duplicate this. All right. Now, right here, we're going to say if value, um, and we want this to be the um, top. So if our top is greater than our camera bottom, then we can't be overlapping. And if our bottom is less than our camera top, then we can't be overlapping. OK, cool. So we have now detected if we are not overlapping. So because we want to do a check to see if we are overlapping, we're just going to put this all inside of a knot. And there you go. Great. Um, so now that we have that, um, we want to trigger this tile and what we're going to do is actually just set it to be a ground tile first, because we do not want this to trigger multiple times. So I'm going to go ahead and set our ground tile at our location, and this will also let us test our code. Now, as I'm walking up, we should not see those tiles because they should be getting swapped as soon as we hit them. So looks like that's working just like we thought. Cool. All right, and now we can actually spawn our enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and make a function for this. Spawn rat enemy. Uh, and this is going to take in an X and a Y. And let's go ahead and call this right here. And we're going to pass in our X and Y of our tile. So like that. OK. Cool. So um, we're going to go ahead and create our temp enemy. 
And now here's where I have to draw something that looks kind of like a rat. We can do it. I want these guys to be Lil, you know? Um, because there's gonna be a bunch of them going around. So first step, big ear. Next step, nose. Legs, tail. I feel like <laughs> the ear is too big. The body won't be able to support the weight of its ear. <laughs> Did you see those guys? They have big ears, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> how else are they supposed to take to generate lift when they start flapping them? <laughs> That's a really good point. All right. There we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set this guy's location. Yeah, Lucas says no, the ears make it look cute. So I, I'm just in the wrong here. But I would I'm almost also thinking like, what if we did like the, you know, how do they have like the outline with it? Like you have a different color inside. Maybe that's too much though. No, that doesn't look right. Yeah, no, that doesn't look right. Hmm. If I made the ear bigger, I could do that. But I don't think I can do it with this side here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nope. All right. Okay. Uh, we got this guy. Um, let's go ahead and one thing I could do is give him another ear. Oop. Give him some legs. All right. Uh, so we can go up here and there we go. Got some little rats spawning. That's nifty. So we're actually going to be spawning a bunch of these guys and we're going to want them to kind of scurry around. So here's the fun part. We're going to make a path for these rats to go on. So um, let's go ahead and start by creating a path. And we're going to want to... Um, I'm, I'm just imagining these guys kind of like zigzagging around and like moving downwards, you know? Um, it's kind of boring, but for now, I think that's going to be fine. So when they appear, we're going to like scan in one direction till we hit a wall, then move down, scan in one direction till we hit a wall, move down, and then just keep doing that and then kind of have them on that path, you know? Um, so to do this um, for the start, we're going to go ahead and um, scan over. And I already wrote a scan function for scanning for. There we go. I already wrote this scan for thing. And what this does is it looks, it starts at a sprite and then it looks in a direction and then grabs a tile at the end. Um, and um, I'm going to copy this because we're going to be doing something kind of similar. So pull this down here. That's the correct way to use a function. Is copy the insides of it and paste it into the other part of the code that you want. Thomas, you don't have to be here. All right. <laughs> you can get out of here. Sure. Yeah, I can just leave. It's fine. Um. Yeah, so uh, the, 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 this function has to do different things than another function has to do. We need to scan a direction for a tile, but um, we're going to be starting at an XY rather than starting at a sprite. And we want to keep moving that tile down and over as we go. So it's not trivial for us to just uh, uh, make it work for both scenarios. Um, OK, you're that. We don't want this. We only want to check if it's a wall. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. And um, we're going to, so we have our temp location. We're putting our time application of temp enemy, which looks good. Um, and then we are scanning in a direction. So um, we want to uh, grab a, a variable here, and this is going to be our um, scan direction. And we're going to set this to be left to start. So 
going to set this to be uh, we're doing the compass directions starting zero is up and then one is right, two is down, three is left. So we're going to set this to be left. And um, this thing is what's causing our error here. We're going to go ahead and pull that out and use our scan direction instead. Oh, I see. For some reason it went way down there. All right, we're happy now, right? Yeah, cool. OK, so this is going to go until our temp location is a wall. And then um, what we want to do in that case is uh, we're going to grab our uh, temp location. We want to move one back from where we were. So maybe it makes sense for us to have a pre-location. And we will go ahead and set our pre-location to be temp location right here. And then um, here we're going to set our pre location to be temp location. And then before we do the move, so we always have this previous location pointing to wherever we were in the past, and we're only going to use that in the bottom here. So here we're going to say um, our path. Oh, our path we want to line to. And then grab our previous location. Like that. And then um, for now, we're just going to be coming down from the top of the screen. We might want to generalize this later so we can also have these guys work if we're coming from the right or the left. Um, but let's just get the easy thing done first. So um, we're going to add line to this previous location. We're going to go ahead and um, set temp location to tile map location bottom of brief location. And then we're going to add step line to temp location. So this is moving us down now. And then we're going to say if our direction equals left, which is three, then we want to set our scan direction to be uh, right, which is going to be one. And then we'll do an else and say if it equals one, then we want to set it to be three. We go all right now we've got a nice little loop we can do so i'm going to grab um all of this junk and um we're going to put it inside of a repeat so this will be how many rows we're going down so right now we're just going to do four and then at the end of this we're going to go ahead and do uh inside of paths animate do our temp enemy my path's two string over two seconds. Loop false. Let's see what happens. There you go. Where did that guy go? <laughs> kind of funny when there's no wall over there. Um, OK, so let's edit our code a little bit to take care of that case, because um, I don't know if you saw that that rat like, woo, just really zipping on over there because our, our tile map you know, doesn't have a wall on the edge. We should probably also detect the camera edges. Um, so, oh God, this is like where I really wish I could write a uh, function to, um, I could take in a location as um, a parameter for a function, because I'm gonna write a function right now and I'm gonna have to pass in the X, Y, which is gonna be such a huge pain. All right. What happened if you defined it in JavaScript and then switched back? It wouldn't work. No, it would um give me a gray block. Uh, sad. Oh, I could do it inside of our little custom thing though. Yeah, let's do that. All right, go to JavaScript. We're gonna go over to custom.ts, and we'll make a thing for this. 
da, 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 da. All right. Export Sorry. function. Yeah, what's up? Uh, Soren was asking how you make a category in blocks. I think it's the namespace. Yeah. Um, so it's the namespace, but if you want to change it so it's not exactly the namespace, um, you can do a slash slash percent block equals on top of the namespace, and whatever you put in there will be the name. So. All right, so it's going to take in a tiles dot location. Oh, wait. With camera. OK. And then we're going to uh, do that same check we just did. So return not um, camera. Wait. Location dot left uh, greater than. Uh, oh, I need to get my camera. So const. Uh, Camera equals game dot current scene dot camera. There we go. Camera. Wait, actually, does the camera that have getters and oh, it does. All right. So if location dot left is greater than camera dot right, or location dot right is less than camera dot left, or location dot top is greater than camera dot bottom, or Location dot bottom is less than camera dot top. OK, this is a, also a wonderful uh, example of how fast it is to do math and comparisons in, in JavaScript versus blocks. Oh my god, there's stuff that's way faster in blocks, but specifically doing comparisons in math is just such a gigantic pain. Okay. Equals is dollar sign location overlapping with camera and we're going to go ahead and do location dot shadow equals variables get location dot dfl equals my location there we go okay no, I mean the cat like the category inside of the groups like projectiles or or namespace like projectiles or physics. I said um, groups already, which is the answer. Uh, if you look at that one, uh, well, I was saying that out because uh, I just can't read apparently. Yep. Oh, and Thomas answered it. He's way more helpful than me. Oh, also, hi, Brohan. I did not see you. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, I'm I'm doing a bad job of looking at chat today. Luckily, these three are more on top of it. All right. So um, with that, we can go over to our custom now. We should have a block. There we go. Is my location overlapping with camera? Yay. So let's go over to where we wrote that code before. Do tile triggers. Goodbye, giant thing. Get out of here. Stick that right there. Put in value. Ah, so much cleaner. And now. Um, I want the slash slash percent. I mean, if I recall correctly, it is just slash slash percent group equals. You have to also define the groups in the namespace. Uh, that that's just for it. ordering, that though. That's not like necessary. That's just so that you can define the order. Okay. So it's you can not... just like put a block in a group, and it'll generate that group for you. If you haven't defined it in the namespace. Yes. Yeah. So if you put in groups, they will just appear in the order in which the groups are defined in your source code. If you want to actually control the order that they go in without having to rearrange all of your code, then you can do like they were saying, just put the groups thing on top of the yeah. namespace. It's just like weights, right? If you don't define the weights, it'll go in whatever right. order it's in. If you don't define the groups, it'll go probably reverse order of the first definition of the group. But yeah, though confusingly, yeah, if you don't define the weight, it's given a weight of 50 yeah. <laughs> for some reason. Um, well, I mean, obviously, zero is the least and 100 is the most, right? So it's, yeah. yeah that's also not true. You can put it whatever weight you want. Actually, I don't know if negative numbers would work. Don't try that. But um, I, I, I've always meant to try uh, decimals, but I always forget to try it when I get to it. I, uh, I don't know if that would work either because I don't know if our parser is smart enough to do. If you put it inside parentheses, it would probably work. I mean, I mean, in quotes, it would probably work. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Um, cool. Okay, so we're spawning a rat at me, but we want to spawn a bunch of these dudes, like I said. Um, so we're actually going to do a, a timer. We're going to grab a separately do. We're going to stick all this in here. And um, we're going to stick this all inside of a repeat. Like this, and then we're going to put a pause at the end here. Um, well, actually, we don't need to do uh, all this path stuff we're doing. We do not need to do multiple times, so we're going to go ahead and pull that out. Because the path is going to be the same for all of our guys. We don't need to worry about that. Um, oh, but no. OK, well, actually. Uh, well, we can pull this. No. OK, so what, what am I talking about? Well, uh, the issue here is that we are using a separately do, um, which means that uh, we have this uh, my path um, variable. And if we use that anywhere else, it's going to get reassigned. Or if we spawn another rat enemy, it's going to get reassigned while this separately do is running. So um, I could, there are a few things I could do here. Um, I could make another function nested inside of this one that took in the path and the sprite and then called it with the separately do. Because once it's in a parameter, it's locked. But I don't want to make a million functions. And um, frankly, this path generating code uh, does not take much processing power. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it all inside of the loop because, you know, it's not that big a deal. It's It's really, you know, not that much wasted CPU cycles. All right, and now we need to pause here, which is going to be the rate at which these guys spawn. I'm going to go ahead and do pause 100. And watch them. Oh, whoa. OK, didn't like that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. OK, wait, I have two repeats going on here. Oh, OK, wait, no. let me let me parse this. All right, so we have. Temp location, time location of temp enemy. Oh, I see. I moved my temp enemy below where I'm using it. So I need to move this guy back up here. And now we should be fine. There you go. Look at those guys. Um, OK, so um, we should destroy these guys when they get to the end of their path. Um, so uh, we have this duration we're setting, um, which I'm actually going to up a bit. They're, they're moving pretty fast right now. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, if we were being really fancy, we would calculate how far they're moving and then do the duration based off that, which, you know, is not that bad. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to um, make a variable here that we're going to call uh, just temp number if that doesn't exist already. There we go. We're going to set our temp number to um, zero right here. And now every time our scanner moves, uh, we're going to change our um, temp number by one. And then um, here we are going to do uh, grab our temp number and multiply it by some amount to get what our total duration should be. So go to math, do times. Grab our temp number. Now, eagle eyed people might be like, isn't this going to be the temp number plus one? Because this is going until we hit a wall and then we actually go to the previous location. Well, no, it actually works out because then we move down and I'm just not putting a thing for when we move down. So it's going to work out. OK, we're going to take this and we'll do times 200. So that's 200 milliseconds per tile and see how fast they're going now. They're going slower. This is more reasonable, I think. How cute they are. Are you familiar with the concept of a guinea pig train? A what? A guinea pig train. Guinea pigs oh. are adorable, and I love them. And um, when there's a bunch of them, and you let them loose in a new environment, they will just instinctively form a single file line and explore the, the space. 
in like a little cute little single file line skating really? train. Yeah, that's what this reminds me of. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. All right. What am I trying to think of now? Okay. So, um, this is nifty. We need to figure out. There's a few problems with this code, and there's just a few things we need to kind of figure out. So one. We should probably prevent them from moving into walls. Or if they move into a wall, I guess they should just get destroyed. Maybe that's the way to do it. So um, this isn't actually happening in our game right now because of how we have done our thing. But let's let's look at these guys up here. Like those ones are fine. These ones, um, eventually, if they keep moving down, they're going to hit this wall. Right? Um, so, uh, I think what we're going to do is if they run into a wall, uh, we should probably like, actually, it's not a problem here either because they're just going to move over to the left and then keep moving down and it's going to be fine. But trust me, there is a possible scenario where they're going to want to move down and there's a wall there. Um, and in that case, it's not exactly clear what should happen. So, I mean, we have a few options. We could try to make it work where like we look for somewhere where um, uh, these guys should uh, move so we could like scan over to the left until we get to where we can move down. Um, I don't know. Also, we need to generalize this code a little bit because um, so right now we have these guys um, and they're always spawning um, and moving downwards, right? But I want to be able to spawn these guys in other scenarios and have them move like up and down and then to the left or up and down and then to the right. So I don't necessarily want to detect which of those it should automatically do. I think we're just going to make four tiles and for each of our tiles, we'll have a direction that they should be spawning and moving. Because um, that's just going to make our lives easier. Um, I guess we could automatically detect it. How bad would that code be? Anyone? Um, it might be... You know, it's not that bad. It's just always going to be opposite the direction the camera's currently moving. Well, that makes it even less not bad. Correct. We could so we could do it opposite the direction the camera's moving. Um, what I was thinking was we could just compare the X Y to the camera right left. Um, because uh, when our thing gets triggered, the tile is still off screen. So um, we should be able to see if it's greater than the right or less than the left or greater than the top or less than the bottom. Then we know which side they're coming off of. You know? True. Um, but I think you're right, Thomas, that it's probably just always going to be the opposite of the current camera axis. So, you know. Yeah, that might work. Um, so if we're going to do that, uh, we still need to generalize our code a little bit. Um, so we have this scan direction. Um, we also want to have another variable here, which is going to be um, do 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 do. Uh, well, I guess we can just use our camera direction. Um, what is the variable for our camera direction? Oh no, okay, we don't even set a variable for our camera direction. That's so annoying. Uh, okay, we'll set it right here. Um, so make a variable. We're going to do camera movement direction. And uh, we're going to set this based off of whichever direction we're moving in. So here, the row of the current location is greater than the row of the next location. That means we're moving up, so that is indeed zero. Here is the opposite, so that's going to be two, which is down. Um, here, the column is greater than the next column, which means we're moving to the left, which is going to be three. And then this one is going to be opposite of that, which is going to be right. And then this is doing, oh, just the move on to the next thing. So that's, that's fine. Okay, cool. I think we're good here. Um, all right, with that. Um, we can go ahead and over here use that value. Um, 
So we know what direction our camera is uh, moving in. Um, and I'm still going to make this an argument to this function. So uh, why am I making this an argument to this function? Um, it's because, again, this is inside of a separately do when we're pausing. So it is possible that while these guys are spawning, we were to transition into a different camera direction. And if that were to happen, then we would get a glitch where some of them would start moving in a different direction, you know? Um, and so for that, we do not want, we want to make sure we're not doing that. Um, so, all right. Um, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and edit our function and take our x, y, and we're going to do um, another thing, which is going to be camera, well, I guess, uh, movement direction, like that. Um, we're going to set this to be the opposite of our camera direction. So let's go to where we're spawning our rat enemy. And inside here, we're going to pass. So you get the opposite of a direction in our nice little wheel thing. All you have to do is add two and then take the mod of four. I'll give you the opposite. So grab our camera movement direction, add to remainder divided by four, and there we go. And now here we are going to basically take our scan direction and say, logic, if our movement direction equals up, If it equals down or right, if it equals down, if it equals left. So if it equals up, um, we're going to set it to be the opposite of what it is currently. So we're going to set it to be one. There's no real reason for me to do this. You know, we could make it the same for up and down and the same for left and right, but yeah, why not? Um, okay, so if our movement direction is uh, to the right, then we want it to be um, either up or down. So I'm just going to arbitrarily choose up. And then for this one, we'll just arbitrarily choose the second. OK. Um, now, all of this code should still be working just like it was because we have we were already using the scan direction thing and checking it when we did our scanning, which is nice. Um, what we need to change here now is um, uh, setting our temp location. Um, we're always setting it to bottom right now, so we want to go ahead and um, check that movement direction we have. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this again and put this right here. Going to pull out all these guys. Do not need them anymore. Put our temp location in here. And if we are moving upwards, we want this to be top. If we're moving rightwards, we want this to be right, then bottom, then left. And now finally, um, in this scan direction right now, we're only doing if scan direction equals three or scan direction equals one. Uh, we also want to do those other two. So if scan direction equals two, we want it to be scan direction equals zero. And then um, else we want to set it to two. Nah, stop, stop adding comment. OK, and we can test this real quick by going into our tile map and adding some more rats in different camera locations. And let's go. All right, so these guys are still working like we think. That's great. Going to move over here, and we should have these guys. Yep, cool. Crawling towards us. Looking good. Go down here. There they are, moving towards us. Wonderful. All right, cool. That works. All right, now we have some games to check out. So um, first off, we're going to check out this game from Mimic VRGT, which I think is an extension. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and close that. Aww. All right. Um, <laughs> we just so excited. <laughs> All right, turn rate extension. Let's go ahead and look at the code for this guy. Um, well, let's go ahead and go into blocks so we can see the blocks. All right, we have turn right by zero degrees or turn left by zero degrees. Um, that's interesting. I wonder what that's doing. So 
I, I was curious about that too. I think there's a block missing in if you go to the uh, no, 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 sprite rotation. It looks like they're starting to make. Uh, yeah, they didn't export the class, I guess. Oh, I um, see what they're doing. So they're, they're, they're starting making... to make like a, a fork of a sprite. Uh, uh, uh. Right. So they're making a sprite that automatically rotates itself using mm -hmm. your rotation things, probably, and then uh, moves in that direction. Yeah. Um, so there's some things we can say here. It, it'd probably be easier to extend sprite base sprite like how we do in other things. Um, yes. That's a little bit complicated to show in just a few minutes, you, and so we just so, want to maybe ask in the forum about this. Yeah, I, I would ask on the forum so we can give you some more idea about this. Now, one thing to note is um, you don't need to extend base sprite. I actually made a way to do it easier. There's this thing called extendable sprite, which uh, makes everything okay. easier. So extend that one, don't extend base sprite. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, if you post about this on the forum, we'll give you tips on how to make your own sprite. Um, yeah. But that yeah. way, all of you like sprite blocks will work with it. You won't have to like call into it for every other thing. It'll be a lot nicer for everybody yeah. involved. Cool. All right. Next up, we have a thing from Lucas, um, but this is a very useful extension. You should keep working on it. Um, yeah, something, cool. so, something Scratch has that we don't, because um, it's kind of harder to do with pixel art, but yeah. All right. Next up, um, we have a game from Lucas called Blast and Slash. Oh, man. Look at this. I'm guessing this is, is this for the game jam, uh, uh, Lucas? Oh, look, that's so cool. All right, so it looks like I can, oh, whoa, whoa, did you guys see that? Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> um, A2 use blaster. Oh, man, Lucas, this, this rules as usual, but I, I love these signs so much. They're very cool. Oh, you can do a Mega Man slide. B while in air to dash. Whoa. Oh, yeah, cool. B on ground to slash. Oh, did I reach the end? I think he said the tutorial, um, you know, to avoid spoilers. Yeah. This is very cool, Lucas. I love the sign thing so much. The way that they delay filling in. I'm gonna have to look at the code of this later to see how you did it, but I really like that. That's 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 awesome. Yeah. Um, and um, also you have really nice movement going on here. Uh, it is a little funny. You can infinite slide, but still, um, <laughs> big fan. Um, if you ever watched a Mega Man speed run, what they do basically is mash. Whatever they are moving, they are mashing these slides. They are constantly moving to the right. So that's what that makes me think of. Um, uh, very cool. All right, I can't wait to see the full game. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to know. Feels super slick. Just yeah. running around, very responsive. Everything feels very nice and tight, which is great. Um, okay, cool. Uh, one thing you might consider is using the. Um, I, I don't know, this might end up fighting you uh, using the uh, platformer extension so that you can get the multiple height jumping. Because I feel like that's the one thing that um, I'm kind of missing here. It's nice to be able to um, uh, control how high you jump by holding down the up button when you do a jump, you know, um, instead of just having the constant height jumping. So that, anyway, just an option, something to think about. Or you could implement it yourself. We've done it on stream a bunch of times. so it's um, Let's see, Luca says it's a bunch of animations that does the delay. Mm, cool. Uh, Luca says, no, I did use this, but the slide and dash were hard to do with that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like that, that can be tough. But, um, you know, it's not that bad to implement yourself if you want to. Um, so basically what you want to do is like, I mean, there was a really good article on this I saw. I think it was like, um, it's like fundamental formulas of uh, platformers. Something like that. Uh, three fundamental equations. Let's see, I think this is it. Yeah, OK. Um, so we have early jump termination. Um, no, this isn't exactly what That's I was looking for. Scary looking. What? It's scarier than it seems. This is what I was looking for. Um, 
OK, so there's a bunch of different ways to do um, uh, jump height and jump termination. No, this isn't what I was looking for either, actually. Gosh, what 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 was it? Let's see. Platformer early jump termination. There was a great article I read a long time ago um, that talked about different methods of term. This is it. This is this. Yeah, this is it. This is what I was looking for. Um, I'll put the link for this in the chat. Um, so this has a really nice guide to different methods you can have for jumping. So um, you know something that uses acceleration like this, or just uses standard velocity, and then different ways to terminate your jumps. So one way is just while you're moving up, just as soon as they release the button, you just immediately set your velocity to zero and start falling down. That's what that is. It doesn't look very. That's that's how sharp it is. How it's all sharp when you're terminating the thing. Then there are other strategies where like you keep going for a little bit, but you have a like set amount that you're going to go up after you've terminated your velocity, which looks a little bit more natural. Or you can scale the gravity, which looks even more natural because then it's just like your gravity is changing based off of how much you're holding it. So anyway, all this to say, something to look at. I, I found this article very interesting. Um, don't be scared by the math. It's I think just kind of the, if you read through it and look at the graphs, you'll get an idea of what they're doing for all the different strategies. Yeah, um, plus it's, it's it's pretty much just you plug in the blocks and it works. Right, the math's all the we have all the, the functions for it and all. True. Yes. Um, you don't need to understand an equation. You just have to yeah. use the equation. Hey, that's what I do with ATAN every time I use ATAN too. <laughs> um, it's fair. Uh, OK, cool. And um, we have something from Storm Lawrence. It looks like they are still working on their economics extension. Let's take a look. All right. All right, game crash with message. Is that new? I wonder what this does. I remember this one from last time. But I don't know if we did it. I wonder on if it does a time. game oh, crash with the message. Yep. It just throws an exception. <laughs> That's great. Um, and yeah, it looks like you have really mastered the uh, enums going into um, a separate block, which is really nice. I like how you're doing it in the money symbols one too now. Um, let's look at the code. Yeah, this looks good. I, I really also like it now how you're no longer just assigning random digits of pot. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be useful to give your block ID a, uh, you know, something that is uh, a little bit easier to remember and understand. But, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, uh, are you sure those are random digits of pi? Or are you just saying that because you're like, eh, I'm sure it's in pi somewhere? No, no, I mean, well, yeah, that's true. Um, Sore Lanson did say last stream that one of their blocks had a night that was the first 100 digits of pi. Um, but I, I think these ones are probably just random numbers. Yeah, anytime I look at some numbers, I'm just like, yeah, that's probably some pi right there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so pi is an irrational number. It repeats infinitely. And I, I don't know if this is actually true or even provable that every numeric sequence will eventually show up in pi. Does anyone know that? I, 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 I would no love idea. to see a proof of that. That sounds like a wild thing to prove, but I'm I don't think that the answer is yes. My gut I says know. no. That, my gut says that the answer to, to if there is a proof of it is probably no, because we mm. have to prove that it's. Yeah. I mean, I, as far as I know, it could be true. You know, and this could be very much one of those things where we just don't know the answer to it. But um, yes. <laughs> it would be interesting to see. Anyway. Um. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Remember, we have a game jam going on right now. So um, you can find it at aka.ms slash game jam. Let me go ahead and pull it up. Um, so this game jam we are doing in partnership with Code Ninjas and um, uh, Girls Who Code. And it is in celebration of uh, Women History Month in March. Um, so it's going to be running for the entire month of March. Um, and uh, the theme is women who have impacted your life. So this can be um, a woman from history, a woman who's actually in your life, or someone, uh, a character you create. You know, we're leaving it pretty open. Um, but uh, you can submit your game on this page. Again, it's aka.ms slash game jam. 
Um, and if you are under 16, you can also submit for the Code Ninjas version of the Game Jam, which um, they have some cool prizes, like a MetaQuest 3 and an Xbox Series uh, S. So um, if you're under 16, definitely submit for both of them. You know, there's no reason not to, and you might win. Real quick, I'll just throw this one in here because I looked it up, and it the, the answer pretty much matches what I think all of our gut feelings was. Uh, the answer is probably yes. It is believed to be both infinite and normal, which would mean that all sequences of finite information are in there somewhere, but nobody knows. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought it was. Like P equals NP, where everyone is pretty sure they know the answer, but you know, it's uh, extremely impossible to prove. <laughs> you just divide out the P, Richard, come on. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, I am uh, Richard Irish on the Make Good Forum. I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Good Forum. I'm Thomas at Sprite on the Make Good Forum. And I'm Sarah at S Research on the Make Good Forum. And uh, we'll see you on Monday at the usual time. Bye.